Hey guys, it's 2019 MotoGP eSport World Champion Andrew Stage for you once again on the Overtake YouTube channel. This time I'm here to tell you 5 beginner tips to make you prepared for MotoGP 22. So make sure to stay until the end where I will give away a small secret from me. Let's begin with one of the biggest changes for any driver in this year's MotoGP game. You can now control the rear eye device. Milestone introduced it and can be activated by pressing a button at the right time. All that the rear eye device does is press the bike down to the ground and reduce potential movement of the tires. The new part allows you to gain more speed out of the final corner for example. You can compare it to DRS in Formula 1, but here in MotoGP 22 the player is always able to press it. It just makes the most sense to activate it on long straights. It is a similar system because it will help you be faster consistently. You may need to practice this as you will forget to press it sometimes. You just have to know that this is one of the biggest changes in the MotoGP games yet. If you do an example like I have here on Mugello, if you think the funnel corner now is the perfect time to activate the rear height device, have a lot more traction and can gain a lot more speed than if I don't activate it. A tip I can give is to put it to a button you find and remember. The standard button is triangle for precision, for example. If you forget to use that, a lot of maybe another button is better. What has helped me is to dial up and try to use a low gear height device as much as I can, just so I build up my memory from it. If you learn this, you'll be much quicker very early on in the game. For tip number two, I want to talk about the steps for a short bit. If you want me to do a full setup guide, be sure to like the video, subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss anything from me in the future. I had the chance to play a bit of MotoGP 22 and I have to say setups feel largely the same. In terms of the setup options, most of the things remain the same, but this does not mean you can just copy what you had last year. Especially early on in the game, I will tell you guys to stay very natural on many tracks, so the most settings will stay between 3 and 4. This is because the longer MotoGP 22 is released, the more people like me will find little improvements in the setup. Maybe if I do a setup with a laser, I will have changed my opinion. A little thing you can play around with, however, is the transmission. I personally like to play around with these settings and there was a change by milestone. In the transmission settings, you can select how long each gear can last. More input here will give you higher top speed, but less acceleration. In MotoGP 21, the settings for the gears used to be from 0 to 8. In this game, it is 1 to 7 now, which means shorter gears in general. If you have a track with a long straight like the Sepang, for example, a small trick that always helps is to set the final gears to 6 or 7. This way, you will have maximum speed down the string line. But like a lot of things, this is very dependent on the circuit, so maybe we should look at that in general. Tip number 3 is something you will be able to apply to any racing game, but especially in MotoGP there is an important rule, the track decides the strategy. It should be obvious that if you know a lot of tracks you will be better at the game, but there is more to the story. If you know which kind of track it is, you will know what to do with your bike. As an example we will take Mugello game because it is one of my favorites. The track is very bumpy and has a lot of hard braking zones, but there are also full speed options. If you want to learn Mugello, it can help to find a track that is similar. Portimao will be a good example here. If you take the time to learn either of these tracks, the other one will almost seem easy. Not only that, but the track you race on will influence your setup as well. Every circuit is different, but if you categorize them, it is much less difficult to know what to go for. As an example, bumpy tracks like Mugello with some hard braking zones will need strong brakes. Not only that, but also the suspension needs to be made softer. If you now have Portimao in the same category, you already have a direction to go in. Maybe the tracks from the 2009 season are also helpful here as they have been added into the game this year. Tip number 4 is about learning complete new tracks. Speaking of it, there is a new one in MotoGP 22, Mandalika in Indonesia. Some returning players may be careful when new circuits are released, but they know a few things to help you. Whenever a new track gets introduced to a game, there is always a period where nobody really knows what to expect from it. But there are a few things you can do to be ahead of the curve. First thing is to watch the real life drivers and how they behaved on the track. Even though MotoGP 22 is a game you wouldn't believe how many similarities there can be. The MotoGP Championship visited Mandalika in March, so you should watch it and concentrate on what the riders do. Secondly, you can go back to the categories. See if the track has a lot of straights or is more twist and fast. 
From looking at Tiet, it seems like Mandalika is very fast with a lot of short, tight corners. Something like Heretz could be a good similar track, so if you take your knowledge from there, maybe you can apply it to Mandalika as well. Lastly, I can only tell you to try it as much as you can. I know this is not very original, but you can't repeat it enough. A good effect of learning Mandalika here, you'll be super fast before anyone else. For our final tip, I will share my secret tactic when it comes to electronics with you. They are part of the setup as well, but not as dependent on the track normally. Electronics also have a greater impact on your overall driving than the other points of the setup. There are some general things you can watch out for here. Let's start with the traction control. This setting helps you find grip when you accelerate from a corner, but it also takes away some speed for example. Usually 5 is the standard value here, but you think it is too high to be fast. 3, maybe 4, is far better in terms of speed. I remember last year everyone started with 4 and the after setups were completely developed changed it all the way to 2. This just shows you much room there is to play with. The other two options are engine brake and anti-wheeling. I will keep them around 3 or 4 as well. The same logic applies as with the traction control. The more you push these values to the max, the less speed you will have. Of course, when you reduce them, you will have more problems in terms of stability. That's it from my side, I hope you guys found these tips useful and now have a smoother start in MotoGP 22. If you like these videos, don't forget to tell us in the comments. This was it from me, thank you for watching and see you next time, ciao!